Standing, I would like everyone to come back on. Um, we're going to hop right into this um, post discussion and reflection to talk about the two amazing presentations. Um, first, starting with our presenter, Rong Lu Tang. Welcome back. Um, and um, and we um, don't have to go in order as well, but I just want to say um, a quick thank you, Ron Lutang, for um, your presentation, making it visible for Asian female musicians. Uh, it was very inspiring, expanding our knowledge on the importance of inclusion and equality. And I also want to thank you, um, T, um, for this in-depth sharing of cultural history, um, awakening, that's uh, how I, I saw it, um, how we looked at our humanness and identity in relation to the space around us. So um, I would like to open up and ask questions um, and have anyone just bring comments in. But since we are doing both, um, both sections right now, I would like to just kind of pose a question um, for both our presenters. Um, <clears throat> And that is, there's intersection both in, um, I, I hear race and gender in, in both presentations. And so I wanted to know um, in these intersecting um, identities, how important is education to your trajectory? We can start with, um, we can start with um, Rong Lu. From my point of view, um, I think, uh, the imbalance of the gender and um, especially for Asian people, um, if, I, if we don't have examples um, in front of like role models for us, um, before us, like the generations before, um, we would not have the courage to pursue our um, career and future dreams to um, um, sort of become the better version of self and better version of musician in the future. Um, since in my industry, um, there's a really lack of um, profession per uh, professors professors in university and really top um, like musicians who um, can contribute a lot to the music industry um, who are Asian and also female, especially for female sector, um, um, like only like 30 ish percent of the female professors in university who are teaching uh, music and uh, maybe piano performance from my point of view. So um, I think um, to sort of like solve this problem will give us more courage to pursue uh, a better career for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much for that. And um, as well as UT, as you know, you took us on this journey of research and um, involving us in this history. that research to your um, your present like right I was just so in inspired I'm thinking about Saul Williams Neptune Frost um, that came to mind um, the afro you know you tell us about the past was very much present and afro futurist um, as well yeah well thank you for um, the question these reflections um, I guess I think about this in several ways um, one I think um, you know, we don't actually have a lot of this history represented in um, in our mainstream history, in our textbooks and things like that. Um, it, I was, um, you know, significantly into my adulthood until I knew anything about the Stoner Rebellion. And, um, you know, I think that that is purposeful. And um, so to me, the idea of you know, creating a space for people to learn that these rebellions happened seems really critical um, for understanding that, you know, our ancestors weren't passive, they weren't um, just giving themselves over to this, this system, that there was a lot of um, unrest and also a, a lot of um, actions that we can look to as models for how to, to take uh, similar action in the future. We still need, you know, liberation. Um, but I guess thinking about identities as well, um, there's something for me that feels so crucial about understanding our complicated history in this um, country. Um, and um, that's, you know, across racial lines, um, our, the United States in relation to other nations. 
And um, I think that that is really critical for having a sense of who we are as individuals and as a group, but then also not limiting ourselves there. So I mentioned these traditions um, that are sister traditions from the US and the Caribbean. And um, you know, there are people performing these who don't realize that they have the very same roots and that at a certain point, people performing these were in a, a dialogue um, because we've allowed for these colonial boundaries of nations to be the things that tell us how we engage with each other. So knowing that history to me becomes important for understanding where we came from, but also how we can start to, to push out some of the boundaries that it's imposed upon us. I would like to open this up um, for any comments, reflections, any answers to the prompts and the questions that T um, proposed, as well as anything um, that was um, in conjunction and connection with um, Ron Lu. So please, let's open up. Yes. You go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you so much for organizing this conference. Um, thank you, T, for presenting your work and making the work. Well, I missed your session, um, but I think at the very end, and people will seem to be very engaged. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, so, um, T, I have like a million questions, and I'm trying to narrow to one. Um, okay, this one is the clearest question. So. Um, I thought I noticed in some of the lyrics um, that there was a kind of like a blurring of the we of like the of, of who the speaker was with the rebels themselves. Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think uh, I hope this is clear when you start at the beginning of the piece and go through it that the spoken voice is me talking about like my uh, journey and um, more of the singing are these other characters. Um, but, you know, we'll find out. Um, but um, to me, there is something interesting actually in there being these moments of um, overlap or um, um, or muddiness between those lines, um, specifically in terms of like thinking about how do we as humans like put ourselves back into the rest of the world and into that beyond human space? Um, and so how, who we are and like what our boundaries are can start to become a little bit more confusing when we really commit to, um, to opening up into that. David Abram, who I've talked about a ton already, but has been really influential for me, um, he talks a lot about reciprocity, like you're only going to get in as much from the world as you open up. Um, and also are ultimately giving of yourself. So, um, uh, so I think things can get messy and complicated in that um, and potentially in productive ways. Um, but the other thing that I think in some of these pieces that um, I was thinking about was when is this a, a singular entity or what is a singular entity? What is gin? Is it a bottle of gin? Is it all the gin that exists? Um, and so how, when we start to think beyond, beyond the human, how the idea of a singular individual or a collective is maybe not quite so clear. Um, so that's some of, I think, what you might've been picking up too in the lyrics is, um, you know, when is it a head or when is it multiple heads singing? Um, and when are they seeing themselves as a discrete entity? And when is it um, uh, as a larger collective? that they're speaking. So thank you. I look forward to hearing your other <laughs> questions too. <laughs> I will be pestering you about them. <laughs> thank you so much. T, you mentioned um, music as an offering. And that's something that connected to me with both uh, presentations today. And I was wondering if, um, and you also, did ask the question about beyond human. And I just want to answer that for myself that um, beyond human felt very musical to me. It feels infinite. Um, that's what came to mind, um, infinite space, unknown possibility, unearthing um, and more, than cap more than what we are capable of um, or more than what we think of we're, what we're capable of. And regarding social justice and um, inclusion, um, Beyond Human is what I feel 
is the kind of need that and the drive that we need to be thinking about when we are thinking about these systemic constructs of going past the box, of going past what has been built, um, the law and power, the things that feel stagnant. Um, and uh, what does it mean to really tr to reach past it? And that's what it feels like, you know, when you said beyond human. And and both of you all are talking about um, in in this section in, in your sessions of of redefining and making more visible and and and, and what what ownership is and has. And so I was hoping that you all can speak to music as an offering. Um, what what other powers that you feel. And so for um, Ron Lu, when you're talking about music, you told, you know, you explain your, your background and background stereotypes of why some of um, female artists or um, Asian artists are getting into music. But I want to know and speak to some of the reasons why you connect to music and do you feel that you um is there space to bring your identity more into classical music and then um also t if you could talk more about music as um as an offering this is your voice that we hear um in these recordings correct beautiful Um, I think music is offering for me um, as well, since I feel like through music, I um, sort of have the opportunities to um, sort of like explore other art forms such as poem as like uh, painting and like any other art form that can uh, give me more creativities in music and when I'm like playing music I'm thinking about images and I'm thinking about colors and what kind of like storyline I can tell um, as a musician so um, I think um, as an Asian musician bring like two cultures together as what I mentioned about the uh, professors I talked about, they are also Asian born mu musician and they are also like studying uh, US and after that, and they like got an offer here to um, teach uh, generations and generations. Um, I find that so amazing. Um, uh, like that's an offer for me using through music, I can gain something, I can cooperate with different cultures and I can pass on to generations and like uh, give back to my society um, as a person, not any identities that's uh, like blocked by Asian or blocked by female identities. That's why I want to, um, yeah, present present uh, in this presentation as well. Mm. So uh, thank you so much for the two excellent speak speakers. Um, so I learned from the Rachel speak that the growth experience of Chen enlightened me that the combination of Western and Eastern culture elements contribute to the creative art and uh, also help me to confirm my future create creation based on the integration of Western and Eastern factors. Um, and I learned from the tea speech that I I, I need to communicate with my plant since today. <laughs> and uh, that's a wonderful um, perspective. Perspective. Uh, so I also create poems using cloud stars uh, and um, uh, mountains, trees, something like that. So very uh, insightful. So uh, I have a question for Rachel. So from your point of view, what's the key for Asian female artists to confirms right and expand their identities in their career development. Thank you. Thank you for asking question. Um, I feel like um, Asian has this sort of um, submissive um, sort of personality-ish um, in their gene. And I feel like for uh, Asian, they tend to work more and say less. Uh, but um, in an art form, uh, we are the person who present our art for the audience and we're the speaker for ourselves. So um, for me, um, if we need to, um, like, well, if we want to have more um, like possibilities of ex extend our career or um, present more 
um, of our voices. I feel like we just need to um, try to find different uh, opportunities in communities and try to express ourselves and try to connect with our people and um, see if there are any opportunities we can seize as uh, minorities in this industry. Um, I believe we have a lot of opportunities, especially when we are students in university, but uh, I find um, Asian people lack of the mo moti motivation to find the sources and then chase for those sources to help them become a better person, like not just musician, but a better person in the future and um, have this sense of uh, a person who can give back to the society as well in the future. Thank you. I would like to just um, open the space one um, just for a minute more because we're coming to an end. If T can, um, can you re repeat some of the prompts, the questions that you gave inside your presentation as a reminder to see if anyone can um, answer them because they were really good. Sure. I also wanted to just say it is my voice mainly, but there are three other performers on the recording, one of whom is here, that we heard some in Spirited Liquors, Christy. Um, so I do want to say it's not entirely me. There were others who were really instrumental in um, making it come into being. Um, uh, yeah, I guess what are the beyond human that you find in your work, in your life? Um, what are ways that you can think of to engage with them? And then also um, uh, what social justice models might you see in the beyond human? I have also so many things. Um, and I'm not going to answer all the questions because we don't have a lot of time. But um, one of the things that came to mind about what are the beyond humans, one of the things is, is viruses, bacteria, things like that. And, and I, that came to mind when I was thinking about what are the models, because I felt like the virus was a model for like stopping the environmental catastrophe that was happening at least for a few days, if not longer. And I just thought like, wow, like I really in that moment was thinking about like, there is a larger plan here that has nothing to do with humans. And, you know, and, and, and so that question is really uh, quite powerful, I think. Um, and then the other thing I, I just wanted to share is, is I was struck by the difference between the sounds that we were making when you opened the, uh, um, the floor to everyone, and then what we heard when you played your pieces. And it made me think about um, like somatic uh, evolution and somatics and, and how like originally language really was more, was closer to the sounds of the earth. And then over time, we, we started to disconnect from the environment and the earth. And it started to be more like the language that we know today. Like we created an alphabet, we had in all those things. And so I, I'm curious about how you shifted from this sort of natural thing that you started with into English language. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I need to think more about that. I don't know, you know, like I was kind of working in these different registers, but um, there's something in between, like there's something, there's a gap um, between some of those that I think is still to be explored. Um, and also, I mean, English is my first and unfortunately only language, but um, uh, but there is something to be said for, you know, the dialogue I'm talking about, um, even happening in, in more than one human language. Um, so I don't know, I have to, I have to think about that, but I think that's really provocative. So thank you. Anyone else would like to share? I can share a little bit my writing. Uh, so who 
is the my beyond human in my work. Um, I write the nature's cloud that I mentioned, and plants and star flower, uh, flowers, and uh, uh, additional is elf and the fairy. That really matters in in my life. So I believe they exist. Yeah. So what ways? Um, so I think you use. Uh, I will use poem painting, creative writing, uh, singing or dancing, or dancing um, to communicate with these beyond human. And the possible models, oh, it's so challenging. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I scream um, my man, so I think about it's a Buddha because, um, because Buddha's perspective is to treat every human, uh, every creatures, on the planet eco. So um, does it make sense? <laughs> yeah, so that's my sharing. Beautiful, yes, I also agree. I was quite, quite um, not, not shocked, but it was really cool to hear the juxtaposition of how we made these sounds and ended up um, also hearing these beautiful recordings that literally in my mind made me want to choreograph. That's what it did. I was already think it's polyrhythmic and um, I, I, that's what I was very, um, very moved to do. Um, I, wa I want to thank you. I'm just saying if there's anything I didn't um, answer for myself, but yes, there is very much um, a connection to queer theory too in, um, in your work um, in the beyond human um, that I feel connects to. Um, to that. I want to thank you. What a, a amazing two presentations. Thank you so much for those who came. Your support um, is not just beneficial for the ones listening, but to continue these conversations. This is meant just to be the beginning. Um, and as we know, there is something that's happening on June 19th that we can support and come out. So we would love for you to share that. Um, Continue making these connections outside of the Zoom room. Uh, find each other on social media. Please come back. This is just the first day of many presentations um, that starts tomorrow early at what time, Missy? I put it in the chat, but it starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. on Missy's birthday. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Have a blessed evening and good night. Thank you. Good night.